Welcome to New Life, everyone. My name is Tom Pounder, and I am the online campus pastor. New Life started back in 1993, and we actually launched the online campus in 2015. And we are so excited that you're joining us today online. You know, on the online campus, we like to worship together, we like to learn together, and we like to process together, too. That means we have this thing called the chat room. Okay, in every service, to the right of the screen, we have a chat room where there's a chat host who will talk with you throughout the entire service. And we'd love for you to do that. See, in a regular church, you probably can't talk during the service. But on the online campus, we want to encourage you to talk as much as possible as we worship together and process the message together. So we're really excited that you're here joining us in doing the online campus together. Sometimes it's really good to be reminded of why we do what we do. Simon Sinek even wrote a book called Start With Why that tells us why it's so important to start with why, to have everybody understand why they do what they do and why they make the choices they make. So the question is, why do we serve on Sundays? There's a lot of hows, a lot of whats, just putting chairs down, cookies out, teaching kids, keeping them safe. Those are really how we serve. The why we serve goes much deeper. God chose to love us first, and we get the opportunity to love other people the same way, which in turn actually shows God that we love Him back. And so this week, when you're going through your week, I encourage you, think about what has God done in your life to show you that He loves you, and how can you share that love with other people? There's a lot of ways you can do it on Sunday morning, not just in the building, but also online. So if you're watching from afar, you can still get involved. Simply go to newlife.church serve and check out all the opportunities that are there. And then there's a link to drop us a line and let us know where God is leading you to serve because we'd love to get you connected and show the love of Christ to everyone that comes in on Sunday. All right, so now we're ready to begin the service, but I want to encourage you, stay after the sermon because we're going to do communion together, which, by the way, if you've got some bread and juice at your house or wherever you're at right now, make sure you grab it before communion starts so you can participate along with us. All right, I hope you enjoy the service, and I'll see you right after the message. to sing together this morning. Stop. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible. 
visible things in your name, they shall be done. And freedom conquer, all our chains undone. And sin defeated, Jesus has overcome. And mercy triumph, when the third day dawns. Darkness was denied when the stone was gone. An unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. An unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Things in your name, they shall be done. Oh, let's sing this together this morning. Nothing shall be impossible. Come on, we sing. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. your glory go on and on and impossible things in your name they shall be done unstoppable god let your glory go on and on yeah impossible things in your name they shall be done Amen. Can we give him praise this morning?
together now. for the throne of God this morning. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and train them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling, yeah. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We sing because he is risen and he is our savior. Oh, what a savior. Isn't he wonderful? We sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. We bow down before him. For Lord of all, we sing hallelujah, Christ is risen, so we say, oh, what a Savior, isn't he wonderful, we sing hallelujah, Christ is is we declare we bow down we bow down before him for he 
altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was born with the precious blood of jesus christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are praise this morning.
never failed us and you never will. Will you join us as we pray? God, we're so thankful for your faithfulness. That in the midst of whatever might be going on, that we can trust in you and in you alone. That no matter what people tell us, no matter what might be going on, we know that we can trust in your faithfulness because you never change, you never have, you never will, and your word remains the same. So we trust in your word. We trust in what you have spoken into existence and what you have planned for our lives and for those around us, even though it might be scary, even though we don't know with certainty what might happen, we know you and we know that you are good. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. You can have a seat. Good morning, everybody. So great to see you all here. I'm excited, and you know what I'm excited about is right now online. If you're watching online, you are one of almost 200 people right now. Well, IP addresses, almost 200 IP addresses right now watching, and we calculate that to be almost like two people right now who are watching per IP address. So there's tons of people watching with you today. They may not be here, but they are watching with you, and we're excited that you are here. I'm Tom Pounder, by the way. I'm the online guy, also the student minister. We're so glad, again, you're here joining us today. Hey, if you did not get one of these on the way in, definitely grab it on the way out. It is our program, uh, and it's got a ton of great stuff and a lot of information about what's happening at New Life right now. But also, if you're online, you can just go to newlife.church. Every day, actually, we're updating this because of the coronavirus and because things are changing around the world all the time. We are updating that website every single day. There's a red button or a red tab above the website that will kind of give, keep you updated. But there are so many great ways for you to connect online this week. You may be shut in. Your kids may be at home. There are lots of great opportunities for you to connect. Uh, so I would encourage you, go to newlife.church every day. Check what's happening. But there's also groups that we're starting at newlife.church slash online. Uh, and there's tons of groups, whether they're teen groups, middle school, high school, whether they're adult groups, women-only group, men-only groups. We have plenty of groups starting every single day this week, and we would love for you to be a part of that. To find out, again, just go to newlife.church slash online. Now, if you're here and you're like, man, I want to give, I want to do my tithe and offering today, but I can't do it because I'm not at Chantilly. Well, yes, you can. You can actually go to newlife.church slash give, and you can give there, or you can click the blue give button above the chat box if you're watching online. And speaking about watching online, again, I'm all over the place because I'm just so pumped about what's happening right now. But it, it, online viewers, if you want to do this real quick, just get on your Facebook account or Instagram account or Twitter or whatever you're on. Go and encourage people to watch the stream right now. It's newlife.church slash watch. You can invite people to watch it with us because there's so many churches that are closed today or so many people who are afraid to go outside because they don't want to get the virus, which are completely natural reactions. But we want to encourage people to experience Jesus today. So if you go to newlife.church slash watch, encourage someone to do that. Guys, when you leave here today, or actually you can get on Facebook right now and just share that with people right now. We'd love for you to do that. Hey, uh, also, we are connecting with people all over the community. Brennan has been connecting with people. Stan Rada, our Linton Hall campus pastor, uh, is connecting with people of uh, how to get resources to people who need it. And so if you're looking for opportunities to serve and give, again, if you go to newlife.church, we will have that all updated of how you can give. You can also check our Facebook page as well. It's Brennan, Stan, Chad, a bunch of people sharing information, and we'd love for you to connect that way. And then lastly, if you have kids and you didn't realize this, but we are posting on YouTube, and we'll be sharing it also on Facebook. If you have middle school, I mean, not middle school, if you have young kids, elementary school kids, we have uh, videos that they can watch to stay up to date on what they're being taught today at the Kids Zone. So, lots of great opportunities. Can you feel it? Let's hear a rah, rah, rah. We, we can feel it. Yay! <laughs> Online viewers, do the yay too. You just type in yay. That'd be awesome. Hey, Brett is up here. He'll be up here talking in a second right after this. Good morning. Good morning. 
Welcome to New Life. Really thrilled that you're here. And if you're online, last I checked, there were about 200 uh, computers and whatever watching online right now. And that is great. And um, I want to say a special welcome to you all. Uh, I, I want to say a special welcome to you because uh, to one person who's watching online this morning, and that is my precious grandson, Oliver. Here's a picture of Oliver. The, a couple weeks ago, I said, Oliver, give me a smile. You can, yeah, yeah. It is, I am sorry that all of your children and grandchildren can no longer be the cutest in the world, but um, that is Oliver. I show you Oliver's picture because every Sunday, Oliver watches online. Um, Oliver was born with a condition where if he gets sick, if he gets a fever, there is the real potential of uh, permanent paralysis or death. And so he can't, so we're very careful. Part of the reason that he lives in our house is so that um, we can keep him clean and keep the house clean. We don't invite, uh, we don't have outsiders in the house. When we go home, we always are washing our hands. We have to change our clothes immediately. We're taking showers. Very rarely, actually, do I hold Oliver because um, I'm in the public so much and I don't want to be carrying something that I'm not showing evidence of and, and pass it on to him. That would just be a horrible thing. And so there are like 140 kids in America that are born with what he has every year. They think that some SIDS deaths were actually the result of what Oliver has. They just hadn't diagnosed it back, back then. And so every Sunday morning, Oliver is watching us online, either with his mom or with his grandmother. In fact, he watches us so much online that um, last week when we did this video with Tom Pounder and me, his mom was saying, look, Grandpa. And Oliver looked for a second and said, Tom, <laughs> so that's kind of cool. It's like, at any rate. And so, um, if you are online because you are concerned about sickness or t taking extra care for some other reason, we understand. I hope that we have two thousand people online that are joining us this morning, and I pray that it will be a powerful experience for you. The reality is, we are going through unprecedented times in my lifetime. I I've never gone through a week like the week that we went through last week, and and what we're headed for in the week or weeks ahead. And as the news comes out and more information comes out and more people get the virus, it is really easy for us to be overwhelmed by anxiety. So I've kind of put aside the message series that I was going to begin today, and I just want to talk about how do we stay at peace in the midst of a pandemic? I think there's great opportunity for the church right now to be the church. And I think there's great opportunity right now for people to hear the words of Jesus. In John chapter 14, for instance, when Jesus says to them, don't let your hearts be troubled. Now, the insight here is Jesus doesn't say, don't let your hearts be troubled because it's no big deal what you're going through. This is the night before Jesus will be uh, put on trial before he'll be crucified. There's tension in the room. The, the darkest days that these disciples, the darkest days that the world will ever face are about to, to are, are upon them. And yet in the midst of this great threat, Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I don't know about you, but I need to hear those words right now. In fact, I found myself going back to Psalm 23 several times lately. I find myself actually more and more going back to Psalm 23, um, where, you know, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He will take care of me. And then in that fourth verse, he says, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, Meaning, even though I go through the worst of times, even though I go through the gloomiest seasons, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff, that which protected them and guided them, will comfort me. Now, when David talks about going through the valleys of the shadow of death, he may not have been talking in figures. I mean, David knew what it was like to lead sheep through dangerous valleys where predators are about to kill or might threaten to kill. But David knew what it was like to face death as he faced Goliath as a, as a young boy. He could have died. 
or as a young man, as he's on the run from King Saul who wants to kill him, or as a king when there is a coup and he has to flee Jerusalem because, again, his life is danger is in danger. David knew what it was to face the valley of the shadow of death. But you know what? So do you. We all go through valleys of the shadow of death. That's what part of the reason we like the, the, the psalm. Some of you have served in the military. We have a lot of military people that are here at New Life. You've been in moments where the bullets have been flying or bombs have been going off or IEDs. We have people that put on the police uniforms every week. Every day, you potentially are facing the valley of the shadow of death. We have people that go to the doctors, like Brendan Loveless, our campus pastor, and they're told you have cancer. What's different right now, it's not that we haven't gone through or don't go through the valley of the shadow of death. What's different right now is we don't usually have to cram 7 billion people at one time through the valley of the shadow of death. And it gets kind of crowded. And when it gets crowded in the valley of the shadow of death, it's easy to feel anxious as the social contagion of anxiety takes over. But it's also an opportunity. And that's what as followers of Christ we need to see. Jesus said, I will be with you. The psalmist says, I, you, know, even, you don't need to fear evil because I am with you. I think it was A.W. Tozer, somebody quoted recently who said, a fearless, a fearful world needs a fearless church. Jesus, you're the light of the world. In times like this, when our world is darkest, is gloomiest, it is an opportunity for Christians to have courage, for Christians to rise above, to have a joy, to have a peace that transcends understanding because we have Jesus. So I just want to talk about how do we find peace in, in, in a time of pandemic, I have five points to share with you, but I only have time to share three of them. So what I'm going to do this week, so what I'm going to do this week actually is I'm going to share the other two as devotionals that we're going to put, a, put up online. And so uh, spare you that. Let's, before we go any further, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of all who transcends time and space. I pray for these people who are worshiping with us online, that, you would, that your presence would be known in their rooms, that where they are, that there would not be distractions, that they would keep focused, that they would hear your voice. I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in this place. Um, I thank you that you have the church, that you give us the church to be your community. And pray that you would encourage us here today. Through Christ we pray these things. Amen. The first thing that I would say is, don't fret, give thanks. I think one of the craziest commands given to us in the Bible is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, where the Apostle Paul says, give thanks in everything. Now, for most of my life, that's been an easy verse. If you're living a comfortable American life where you're not really threatened by many diseases and you have plenty to eat and the work is going okay and the money's going okay, uh, it's easy to say, okay, give thanks and everything, even the worst times. But how crazy for the Apostle Paul to say that. The Apostle Paul, who was most likely a huge disappointment to his family once he became a follower of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, who was, who was beaten and stoned and left for dead and, and shipwrecked and falsely accused and imprisoned, and yet the Apostle Paul says, give thanks in how many things? In all things. That's crazy. I think that's what God is calling us to do. And so I thought this morning, when you are tempted to feel anxious, Jesus called, the Bible would say, find reason to give thanks. Give thanks in all things. One reason we can give thanks, of course, is because God is at work in our lives. He's going to use this to mature us. James chapter 1 verse 2 says, consider it great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. Um, we all go through trials. This virus is going to create a trial for the whole world. And it's a serious trial. Why can we, can we be joyful? We need to consider it great joy, not moderate joy, not a little bit of joy, great joy. Why? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. In other words, as you go through the fires, 
you're going to get stronger in God. As you go through the fire, the next time you go through a fire, you're going to build on the endurance that you have experienced in this time. You're going to have a perspective the next time because of what we learned this time. It produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature, complete, lacking nothing. Here's the question. Would you rather have an easy life and never go through troubles and be immature and lacking everything? Or would you rather go through the fires and be mature, lacking nothing? Don't answer that question because I'm not quite sure how I would answer that question either. I want, we all want the easy life. But we need, that's why in maturity, we find ourselves going through difficult, difficult times. We say, God, I thank you that you're going to use this time to draw me closer to you. I don't know about you, but I'm finding myself praying more than ever before. God, I thank you that you use this time to give me more time to search scripture and to find strength in you. God, I thank you that in this time, you're going to teach us wisdom. You're going to teach us things about relationships. You're going to grow us like never before. Give thanks in all things. God's going to mature you through this if you can give thanks in all things. Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we know that in all things, we know that all things work together for good, for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We can give thanks because we know God's at work. We can give thanks because we know that God is the God who specializes in redeeming bad things. He is the God who specializes in taking things that Satan intends for evil, but using them for good. You know, this is a great time to learn to give thanks. Because there are going to be things that we miss that give us opportunity. We can either complain about it or we can be thankful for them. For instance, think of all the sports that have been canceled. You know, um, the NHL has been canceled. The NCAA tournaments, March Madness has been canceled. You know, I got to thinking, was there ever a world before March Madness? I mean, does any of you feel an emptiness like I do, like something like significant is missing? I think March Madness, I was looking in scripture, studied, I think it was the eighth day of creation that God created that, which is why St. Augustine, many don't know that St. Augustine also said that there is a soul, there is a hole in our souls that can only be filled by March Madness. And some of us know what that is. Thank you. I'm thank you that you're in the front row getting that. And um, I know that some of you online are just laughing hysterically as well. But at any rate, so, um, but no, no, March Madness is gone. What was the last time you said, God, thanks for March Madness? You know? Um, it's kind of like that old line in, in, in Chicago, um, uh, you know, the, 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 not the city, but the group. You don't know what you got till it's gone. You're going to miss some stuff this week. Rather than saying, oh, I missed this, it's an opportunity to say, oh, God, thank you for those things. You know? I mean, when was the last time you gave thanks because of the NHL? When was the last time you gave thanks? I mean, do you ever give thanks because of Major League Baseball? I give thanks because of Major League Baseball, but most people don't do that. God, we're not going to have opening. Thank you for Major League Baseball. You know, God, um, thank you for, you know, my kids are out of school. (laughs) You know, parents say, yeah, be thankful that your kids are out of school. It's going to give you more time to love them, to play games with them. God is going to teach you endurance and mature you in every way, right? We give thanks because your kids are, and I was going, no, but there's, there's just great opportunity. And so whenever you're tempted to gripe, you see God, you hear God say, give thanks in how many things? In everything. That's right. In all things. And the one thing I want to point out is give thanks when you See modern medicine, when you experience the benefits of modern medicine, modern science, because that is a direct, I had to make this point this morning, modern medicine, when you experience the benefit, is a direct result of Jesus Christ. It is a blessing of Jesus Christ. You realize that? Some people don't. Modern medicine grew out of a biblical worldview. It would not have grown out ever from a Hindu worldview because the Hindus don't believe that there is such a thing as reality. So why study the world if it's not real? It wouldn't have grown out of Islam or the Greek 
philosophers because they did not believe that they, they believe there is a God who is distant, not a God who is personal and knowable, really personally knowable. It would not have grown out of Eastern mysticism. Eastern mystics don't teach, you know, fill your minds with the rational. Eastern mystics, all you have to do is watch, is watch Star Wars, teaches what? Empty your mind. I love Star Wars, by the way, but it teaches <laughs> empty your minds, right? I could go on and on. The foundation of modern science is the Christian worldview that says God created the world and the creator God revealed himself to us through his creation. And because God is rational and logical and knowable, and he's, and he's communicated to us, himself to us through the creation, we can therefore study the creation and expect logical, rational um, study to be effective. That we're not going to get random studies, random results, because we're pantheists and we believe that, God's, that, that the gods are, are capricious. This is, the basic for the sci- this is the basis for the scientific method, which the basis of modern science, Kepler's scientific method, which said we can have a hypothesis and we can study it based on rational approaches and we can expect consistent responses. It is a Christian worldview. This is why Newton studied the earth and studied the world and came up with his, uh, his uh, uh, physics um, theories because he, he studied the world, understanding that God communicates himself through the world. Rodney Stark, a historian and, um, well, probably a, a sociologist as much as that, has said it well, but he's not the only one by any means. Science was not the work of Western secularists or even deists who believe that God is separate and doesn't communicate himself. It was entirely the work of of devout believers in an active, conscious, creator God. So when you experience the benefits of modern medicine, modern science, you can give thanks to Jesus for his blessings. Philippians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 are a wonderful juxtaposition of absolutes. Whenever you see an absolute in the Bible, take Take, t- uh, give attention to it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious about nothing. 1 Corinthians, First Thessalonians 5, 18. Give thanks in everything. You hear the, um, the book ends? Um, be anxious about nothing. Give thanks in everything. So when you're feeling anxiety, that is a trigger for gratitude. That's why we can have peace that transcends understanding because the Holy Spirit will use that and give us his peace. Second thing that I would say, and this goes a step deeper, don't fret because your focus is on heaven. The more people put their confidence in things that are not worthy of their confidence, the more shaken they are when their confidence is proven to be false. Case study number one, Redskins fans. <laughs> right? I mean, we've been around long enough to know. You put your confidence in the Redskins going to the Super Bowl. Oh, don't talk to me about how what wonderful off-seasons they have you are going to be disappointed, okay? And the more confidence people put, them, put in this world, the more shaken they are when this world gets shaken. But the Bible tells us we can have confidence, but not in this world. Um, James chapter 4, verse 14, James says, this life is a mist. It's a vapor. Now, if you see this life as a vapor that's passing, that's here today and gone tomorrow, that is unstable, how are you going to react when we get hit by a coronavirus and it proves life is unstable? On the other hand, if you try to build your life on a mist, if you try to build your house on a mist and all of a sudden that mist is shaken, all of a sudden you realize, oh no, I'm afraid. The Apostle Paul put it like this. I like to read this um, 
at funerals or at grave site services sometimes. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.1, we know that if our earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal dwelling in the heavens, not made with human hands. Get the picture here. Paul says in this world, it feels like we're living in a tent. But we long for a solid house. In this world, a lot of people try to build a house with their own hands. But it always feels like we're bivouacked. Any of you like to live in a tent? I mean, I know some of you like to go camping. And that's just where I mean, some of you like cats too. That's just kind of a weird thing. But none of us, none of us likes to, uh, is going to go out today and say, hey, I love living in a tent so much. Let's sell our house and go find a tent and live in a tent the rest of our lives. We don't want tents, he says. We want solid buildings built by God. Indeed, we groan in this tent, desiring to put on our heavenly dwelling. Since when we have taken it off, this tent, we will not be found naked. Paul kind of ups the ante a little bit and says, not only does it feel like we're living in a tent, it feels like we're vulnerable, completely vulnerable. It feels like we're naked. Isn't that how you feel when something like coronavirus strikes the planet, and all of a sudden people start to get sick. Lots of people start to get sick. All of a sudden we realize, I feel naked. I don't feel so secure anymore. I didn't realize how insecure I felt. Indeed, he says, we groan, and that's what we're going through right now. The world right now is groaning. While we are in this tent, burdened as we are, because we don't want to be unclothed, but clothed. And I love this last line, so that mortality may be swallowed up by, not immortality, but by life. You see the difference? This world is not all of life. This world is not the fullness of life. There's going to come a day when we throw off this tent and we step into eternity And that's when we realize this is the life that is really life. This is the life that is worth living for. You want to live for this world that is temporary and passing away. You're always going to feel insecure. You're going to have the heebie-jeebies. You're going to panic when this world, when your tent is threatened. But you keep your eyes focused on heaven and you're always going to remember you're not made for this world anyway. And by the way, if you're not a Christian, it's not just a biblical truth. Your soul is telling you you're not made for this world. You have eternal longings in your soul that can only be satisfied by eternal things. If you are made for this world, if you are made for time, why are you so uncomfortable with this world? If we're made for an imperfect world, why are we so uncomfortable with a virus that threatens this world? If we're made for this world, why don't we like to watch our children age or people get sick or our parents age? You know, my dad, I I wish I could have seen my dad play baseball when he was in his 20s. I saw him play softball in his 40s when in his 40s he still had the best arm on the field and still the fastest guy on the field and the best glove on the field and I remember when he had gray hair and the outfielders, I don't remember what they, the outfielders start sneaking in and dad hits the ball over their head for a home run. My dad, they say my dad was one of the best baseball players of the county of, of Northwestern Pennsylvania when he was, I never got to see my dad play at his best. I, and the older I get, and now my dad shuffles, 83 years old, struggles with asthma, both of his shoulders have been replaced because he played softball on three different softball teams until he was 65 years old. Um, um, but I'm so glad I guess there will, be, there will come a day when I see my dad in eternity. I am so glad this world is not our home. We're just passing through. But if this world is your home, when this home gets threatened, you're going to be anxious. 
That is why the, uh, the, um, the application here is don't fret, live as strangers in this world. This is a wonderful opportunity for followers of Jesus Christ. I would encourage you to read Hebrews chapter 11 this week. You're going to be stuck at home a lot this week. Read the Bible, okay? Hebrews chapter 11, it's the, it's the hall of fame of the faith, hall of fame of faithful people. And it just gets, one thing they all have in common is they did not live for this world. They lived as strangers in this world just passing through. A great example is, is Abraham, who's considered the father of faith. It says, by faith, Abraham as a foreigner in the land, as it stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise. Living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, co-heirs of the same promise. Now get this. Abraham was looking forward to a city that has f- foundations. A city that has foundations. If you're living for a mist, if your life is built on a mist, you don't have foundations. He looked forward to a city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. If you put your faith if you're living for your life for the building that you're building on vapor, whose architect and builder is you, then moments like this, seasons like this, are going to shake you. But if you say, this world's not my home, I'm living for eternity, I'm living for God who's building my house, then in this world, though we have trouble, We have peace and courage. What's it look like to live not for the tent, but for an eternal home? It's going to affect your time. Are you spending your time just focused on yourself or focused on others and serving God, listening to God all the time? It's going to affect your talents. Do you use your talents just to serve yourself, just to be successful, just to fulfill yourself? Or do you use your talents to honor the one who gave you those talents? By the way, I want to thank all of you who serve in Kids Zone. Those of you who are online who normally serve in Kids Zone, um, Cindy told me today that what made her feel really bad was people who are not being able to serve today and were so apolog- felt so bad because they didn't. It's like, well, I'm pregnant or I have a sick child or whatever. And Cindy's like wanted to say, hey, don't feel bad. We understand if you are being cautious because of the virus. Don't feel ashamed. There's no shame for not serving right now. We understand. Now, after this passes in several weeks, if you don't serve, we will shame you. <laughs> but right now, <laughs> no, there's, there's no shame. Um, anyway, so, uh, so, but we use our talents for it. We use our, uh, I mean, think about our hunger that we have. We'll want to read the Bible more. Well, you know, uh, my, uh, um, as a deer pants for the water, my soul pants for you, oh God. If my life is, is in eternity, my focus is on God, I want to listen to God's voice more. I'm passionate to draw closer to him. And it even is going to affect my joy. I love the story of the young boy whose dad said to him, we're going to go fishing on Saturday. All week long, he looked forward to going fishing. And as the day approaches, Saturday morning, he wakes up and it's raining, thunder, lightning, raining. And all morning long, the boy sulks. All morning long, he's disappointed, he's grouchy and grumpy. And then at noon, sure enough, the clouds open, the sun shines. And his dad says, we still have time, let's go fishing. And so they go fishing. They have the best fishing day ever. They're catching fish. They're sharing stories. They're laughing together. That night, the little boy goes to bed. And with the father beside him, he prays, God, please forgive me for being so grouchy this morning. I guess I wasn't looking far enough ahead. How many times do we lose our joy because we're not looking far enough ahead. But if this world's not your home and you're just passing through, it is amazing how much joy and peace and confidence we can have right now because our focus is in another place. Finally, don't fret because you're putting your hope in Jesus. In the darkest times, we don't need to fret because our confidence is that Jesus is with us. Others may abandon you. Jesus will not. Jesus promises, even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't need to fear evil because I will be with you. 
Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid, though the earth trembles and the mountains topple into the depths of the seas, though its water roars and foams and the mountains quake with its turmoil. We might add, though viruses erupt, spread, and threaten all of humanity, we need not fear, for God is our refuge and strength, and he will be with us. Fascinating little story that we don't talk much about in the book of Acts, verse 27. The Apostle Paul is on his way to Rome where he will face Nero. He's a prisoner in this ship, and the ship that he is on is headed for the rocks. Everybody on board knows they're going to shipwreck, and suddenly a panic spreads over the deck because everybody says we're going to die. Everybody is afraid, except Paul, who's calm. This weirdo is calm. Why? Verse 24, he listens to God. It says, an angel of God came and said, don't be afraid, Paul. It's necessary for you to appear before Caesar. And indeed, God has graciously given you all those who are sailing with you. Everybody else is losing their heads. But Paul stays calm because listening to God, he knows God has a mission for him. His courage is not because he's naturally bold. It's not because he's taken some power of positive thinking course. It is because he is in tune with God and he's listening for God and he's convinced that he's not just going to react to the situation, but he's going to walk according to God's purposes in his life. And God has said, I will be with you. Again, that picture in the psalm, um, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Why does he have confidence? Because he has confidence that the good shepherd is leading him. And therefore, where the good shepherd takes him, he will be strong. He will be at peace. And what is the key to us being courageous? It is focusing on Jesus and listening to Jesus and realizing I'm not in this world just to react to things in fear. I am in this world because God has made me for a purpose. And God, I want to hear your voice, and I just want to do what you're leading me to do, to serve, to care, to be your church in this time. And so we do not fear, because Jesus is our focus. We are listening to him, and his rod and his staff comfort us. Nothing clarifies our thinking quite like facing the shadow of death. And you put confidence in yourself, you're going to be disappointed. You put confidence in medicine, it's going to let you down. You put confidence in politicians, they can't find a cure for this virus. They haven't, nobody can for a virus. Put your confidence in investments, they're going to let you down. You put your confidence in Jesus Christ, he will never let you down. Because he is your good shepherd, you'll become a child of God. 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has for us. See what great love the Father has given us that we should be called, called God's children, and we are. You focus on Jesus, and you remember that you are a child of God. And we can be at peace not because the world is perfect and not even because we follow Jesus perfectly. Nobody does. We can have peace and confidence because we are his. Because Jesus, the perfect Savior, died for us, our sins are forgiven. And God the Father has written a will. And in that will, he has written your name and mine. And he is yours. And you are his. 
After the California fires recently, Samaritan's Purse Ministry sent people out to help the families who lost their homes. One couple said they stood behind an elderly woman who was watching as the last embers of her house faded and in, into, the, into the smoke of the air. They said they could hear this woman say, I've lost everything. I've lost everything. And then they heard her say one more time as, she, as, her, as her jaw jutted out, she said, I've lost everything, but I still have my Jesus. Somebody said, if you lose everything and you still have Jesus, what have you lost? But if you have everything this world has to offer and you don't have Jesus, what do you gain? So today I want to invite you to make Jesus Christ your good shepherd, to put your confidence in him, to put your focus on eternity, to be thankful because in him there's always a reason to be thankful and to be the light of the world in a time when the world desperately needs the light and courage of Jesus. Would you pray with me, please, Heavenly Father? I thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus, who is our strength, who is our rock, who is our refuge. We thank you that Jesus, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross. He did not minimize the cross. He didn't diminish the cross. But he looked beyond the cross and held on to reality. And Lord, may we be the people of Christ in a time when people are quaking in fear. May we be sensitive and not diminish their fears, but agree with their fears, understand their fears, but allow you to transform those fears into faith, into confidence in you, and to emit a joy and a peace that comes only from you and to be your church. Lord, use this time to ignite a revival in this world, in this nation. May your people rise up to really not be casual Christians, but to be committed and vital and strong in their love for you, the Holy Spirit flowing through us. Lord, this is our prayer through Christ. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's message. In fact, what I would love for you to do right now is to get in the chat room and share one thing that you learned from today's message or something that encouraged you or even challenged you. And as we experience communion and the rest of the service, you can just share that with the chat host today. All right, so now we're going to transition to the time of communion. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would encourage you right now to grab the juice and the bread and to take it and reflect on the sacrifice Christ made for you so many years ago, that grace, that forgiveness he's given you. Take and eat of the juice and the cracker and reflect on that time now. If you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would encourage you, what is that next step of faith that you can take? And if you'd like to process that at all, I would love to talk to you as well. So feel free to email me at tomp at newlife.church. Because let's take a time right now where we just reflect on God's grace and compassion for us right now. No matter where you are in your faith, there is always a next step that you can take. So I want to encourage you, don't be complacent with where you're at right now. Look and ask God to encourage you in that next step of faith and what you can do to grow in your faith today. 
Uh, hey, Stan is actually my very best friend. He's like the guy who I call all the time and text all the time, but he is our Linton Hall campus pastor, as Brett said, and I know he wants to share a few things today as well. All right, so for those of you who uh, may not know, we are a multi-site church. We have this live campus out in the Gainesville area that uh, I have the privilege to lead. Uh, this last week, uh, Prince William County shut everything down. So we lost our spring event. We lost Sunday morning opportunities. We lost Easter. Uh, everything kind of went away this last week for us. Uh, I was, was kind of thinking through that a little bit, and the verse that kept popping into my mind was Exodus, uh, Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. What you meant for evil, God means for good. Um, my grandfather was in ministry for over 50 years of his life, and he always referred to the church as a lighthouse the purpose of a lighthouse is that when it's foggy, when it's hazy, when the storm is hitting, when the captain is scared, when the crewmates are scared, when they don't know where they're going and can't see, the lighthouse points the way. And in a time when the world is scared out of its mind and they don't know what's going to happen a month down the road, it's the church's opportunity to be the light. And so I would ask you to pray for our campus, uh, but don't pray out of pity or God fix this for them. Pray out of boldness and courage that we would grow online via the opportunities that we have to reach people from a computer screen in our offices and in our living rooms. Um, pray for boldness that we would be a light to a world that is, is scared and fearful and anxious uh, and that we would, be, we would be bold and courageous in this time. And so I wanted to just uh, be with you guys briefly, give you a quick update on the Linton Hall campus. Uh, but if you're going to pray for us, pray for, pray for boldness. Don't don't pray for anything else for us. We want to be bold in this time. So, yep. uh, Great. Thanks, Dan. Now we're going to transition to the time of tithes and offerings. If this is your first time at New Life, feel no compulsion to give. We're just so grateful that you joined us today, and we hope you come back next week as we continue our series. But if you do consider New Life your home, or that you do feel blessed by this service, I want to encourage you to think about what can you give today all you have to do is go to newlife.church slash give, or you can click the blue give button above the chat box. We would love for you to prayerfully consider how you might trust God with your finances today. All right, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.